Hello, good evening, happy Thursday. I'm Jenna Schulman, a college counselor in Northern New Jersey in the tri-state area, which is also where our school that we are spotlighting today is located in the tri-state area, just on the other side of New York, Fairfield University. And I'm happy to introduce Tracy, who is the North Jersey admissions counselor. I think that's- or, or um. I'm primarily Jersey with the exception of Hudson and Bergen counties. So I do all the other counties except Hudson and Bergen. Okay, got it. I'm in Hudson County right now. Literally. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so happy to introduce Fairfield. It's a beautiful campus right by the beach or the sound, I should say, uh, which has a beach. <laughs> and uh, so I will have Tracy I'll hand it over to Tracy, have her introduce Fairfield and all about the school. And then we will have questions and answers at the end. And um, yeah, I think that's it. So welcome, Tracy. All right, thank you. So I'm going to share my screen. All right, let's. So good evening, everyone. My name is Tracy Gills. I am an assistant director of admission at Fairfield University. Um, and so I'm just gonna be just doing an overview of Fairfield, um, especially for those who may not have visited. Jersey is a big uh, state for our school. So um, we get quite a few students from, from various areas in New Jersey. So for those that aren't familiar with Fairfield University, we are a small to medium sized Jesuit university, one of 27 Jesuit universities in the universities and colleges in the United States. Um, small to medium size, about 4,000 undergraduate students. We are located in Fairfield, Connecticut, um, about an hour north of New York City, maybe 20 minutes from Stanford. Uh, so it's very easy for students to get into the city to do their internships, um, whether it's in New York City or Stanford, Connecticut, Greenwich, Connecticut, um, those places, especially Stanford has one of the highest concentrations of Fortune 500 companies. So a lot of internships are done in those areas. Um, so as you can see on the screen, these, this is just kind of what the campus looks like. Um, we are a D1 school. We have 20 D1 uh, sports um primarily a residential campus so you are guaranteed housing all four years on campus you don't have to worry about what's going to happen from year to year um, students in their senior year it is a lottery system where you have the opportunity to live by the beach so if you do get selected to move off campus your senior year you can see that that is actually what beach housing would look like so a lot of seniors um, get very excited to move off campus, but any type of off-campus housing has, you're, you're actually responsible for everything, rent, utilities, everything you're solely responsible for. But if you live on campus, you get to experience the different types of residence halls. So we have residence halls that are traditional two to a room, uh, suite style, apartment style. So you'll never really feel you know, like uh, you want to get off campus because you're tired of living with someone. There's different um, styles of living on campus. As you can see, that was a Metro North. Takes you right into Grand Central Terminal um, within an hour. We do have a shuttle that runs on campus. Um, I want to say every 30 to 40 minutes, uh, it takes you into town. And the first stop is going to be the Metro North. So it's very easy for students to get into New York City, whether it's to go window shopping, maybe um, at a Yankee, go to a Yankees game or internship. Students aren't on campus. They're probably in New York City hanging out. So I mentioned guaranteed housing all four years. Um, average class size is 20. Um, so we pride ourselves in that one-on-one -on -one attention with professors. Professors will get to know who you are. If you are missing from class, they will notice and a lot of times they will reach out to you to make sure that everything is okay. Um, and as you can see, this is Fairfield by the numbers. Student faculty ratio is 12 to 1. So like I said, you definitely get that one-on-one -on -one attention. Professors are easily accessible. 
They make sure to offer office hours, email addresses. You'll see them walking around campus. Some of them will be your advisors. Um, you may get an advisor that, that's in the advising department, but you may have a great relationship with the professor and you can easily ask to switch to have that professor as your advisor. So again, we take pride on the relationships that our students build with our professors. And that way, it's also harder for them to fail you. Once they really get to know you, you stop in for office hours, um, it, it'll be much harder for them to fail you. Um, though, I doubt that'll be the case for any of you that may be looking into Fairfield. Um, yeah, so we're D1 school. We do have a graduate program, but we're primarily an undergraduate school. So you'll see that we have a little over a thousand graduate students. We do have a few uh, four plus one programs where students um, do participate in the graduate school. So now we can talk a little bit about academics. We have over 40 majors separated into four different schools. We have the College of Arts and Sciences, Dolan School of Business, School of Nursing, and School of Engineering. So as you can see, our College of Arts and Sciences is our largest and oldest school. Uh, if you are undecided, which is okay if you come into Fairfield undecided, you don't have to know what you wanna major in. A lot of times we like to joke around and say that undecided is actually our most popular major because we're not expecting students to come straight out of high school and know exactly what they wanna major in. But if you do, that is awesome. But if you are undecided, you will be housed in the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, some of the popular programs within the College of Arts and Sciences would be biology, English, communications is our largest and oldest program within the College of Arts and Sciences, um, and psychology and English, I would say, are the popular programs. Doesn't mean that they're the best programs, they just tend to be the popular ones. Uh, within the Dolan School of Business, I would say almost all of them are, are popular. Um, accounting, finance, and management tend to be the ones that students really um, are interested in. But some of the good things about our Stolen School of Business is our proximity to New York City. Like I said, it's very easy to get to New York City. And a lot of our professors have either worked in the field that they teach or they currently work in the field that they teach. So they are great resources um, when it comes to searching for internships. And our business school is AACSB accredited. And that's the most prestigious accreditation that any business school can have. So if you are interested in going to a business school, whether it's at Fairfield or any other school, you wanna make sure that the school um, is AACSB accredited, okay? And we actually uh, just, so this year, I think is gonna be the first year that, um, people are gonna be using our brand new Dolan School of Business, state-of-the-art, brand new building. So that's something um, that students are excited about. We have our School of Engineering, which is our smallest school by design. Um, we wanna make sure that our students can get into the labs much quicker. And so that's one of the advantages of going to an engineering school at a liberal arts school, um, because it's easier for students earlier in their college career to, to link up with professors and maybe do some research projects with them or you know you don't have to fight for time and space in in labs as you may have to do at a specialized engineering school if that makes sense um, and then last but not least we have our school of nursing nursing is our only direct admit program so anyone that might be interested in nursing has to indicate that on the common application any other program you can put undecided or you can put that program down on the application. But if you are admitted into nursing, you are a nursing student starting your freshman year. And I think that's one of the reasons why nursing is so popular at Fairfield, because a lot of schools you apply, you want to get into nursing, but you have to apply to the school and maybe wait a year or two later to then apply to the nursing school. So at Fairfield, once you get in as a freshman, you are a nursing student. If you apply to the nursing school, and you do not get in, you are not in, you don't get into the college because typically students that are applying for nursing, they want a nursing program. However, there are instances where students 
really love Fairfield that much. And if for some reason they don't get admitted into nursing, they can ask to have their application reevaluated for another program. So that is an, that is an option as well. Um, you can see that social work and public health is housed in our nursing school, but they are not direct admit programs. So if you're still not sure if that's what you wanna do, you can put undecided. And we do give our undecided students a full year to figure out what they wanna major in. So hopefully by sophomore year, you can um, declare your major. And so if you declare your major by sophomore year, even if you're double majoring and majoring with a minor, you should be able to still graduate within four years. We do have a few um, four plus one programs that aren't listed here. So for example, we have a four plus one MBA program. So if you do see that on the common application, you don't have to put that down on the app as something that you wanna major in. Essentially, you would choose maybe accounting. And then towards your, the beginning of your junior year, you would meet with your advisor and talk about the next steps to get into that fifth year to get your MBA in, in one year. We also have a teacher certification program. Um, it's not considered a major because you would essentially be majoring in something within the College of Arts and Sciences um, while minoring in the teacher certification program. And that is a five-year program. You get your master's in education at the end of, of five years. Um, with psychology, we have, um, for example, industrial um, and organizational psychology. That's a fifth year program. So these five year programs you don't apply to on the Common App as an incoming freshman. That's something you talk about with your advisor um, the beginning of your junior year. And we'll leave time for questions if you have questions about any more of these majors. So that was just a brief video uh, with students sharing their experiences on campus. All right, so this now is what a lot of students are interested in, how to apply to Fairfield. So the only way to apply to Fairfield is through the common application. You will not find a separate Fairfield application anywhere else. Um, the requirements for the common app is obviously your high school transcript, an official high school transcript. And what we're looking for on the high school transcript is we wanna see that you have challenged yourself within the context of your high school. So I'm never going to take an application from, uh, just let's just make up a name, Jersey City High School and compare it to Bergen County High School because those are two separate schools, separate programs. So if someone from Jersey City High School, if that school doesn't offer honors and APs, but Bergen County High School offers honors and APs, I can't say, well, I'm not gonna look at the Jersey City High School application because they have no honors and APs. If your school doesn't offer honors and APs, you can't be penalized for not taking challenging courses. I hope that makes sense. Um, however, we do like to see students challenge themselves. So if your school offers honors, APs, um, high honors, IB courses, that's what I'm gonna be looking for in your transcript want to see that you have challenged yourself. So I'm not saying to take all the AP courses that's available or all the honors courses. You're going to take courses that you can manage, but we, it, we want to see that you have been challenging yourself, okay? Council recommendation is required. Only one is required. If you want to add more recommendation letters from, I don't know, maybe a coach, a boss from an after-school job, um, or other teachers, feel free to do so. But if we do not have a council recommendation letter, your application will remain incomplete until we have that. So most schools have a seamless system where everything kind of just 
comes in together. And so that's never really a question. Every now and then, um, a student's application will get held up because we are missing a council recommendation. So once you do apply to Fairfield, you will be given, you'll have um, access to like your student portal. So I do encourage students to, to check that regularly just to make sure that everything that we need um, to complete your application is, is in, that we actually have it. Uh, personal essay, that is just from choose a prompt from the Common App. We don't require anything extra. Um, we do have a supplement, but it's literally yes or no questions. So you don't have to worry about any extra essay or anything um, for Fairfield. Optional components. We are test optional school. We've been test optional for quite some time, um, quite a few years now. So I know that there are a lot of concerns with students who because of COVID, they haven't been able to take either SATs or ACTs. That is okay. We will never ever require students to submit test scores. Um, typically I tell students, if you are not a good test taker, you might not wanna take submit test scores. Um, if you've taken your test a couple of times, but your test scores aren't an accurate representation as to the type of student you are in the classroom, say you are a better student in the classroom, then you don't have to submit your test scores. You'll never be penalized. We won't put your application at the bottom of the pile because you did not submit test scores. And if you don't submit test scores, you can still be considered for merit scholarships. If you don't submit test scores, we encourage students to come in for interviews. Um, and even at that time, interviews are just strongly encouraged. They are not required, okay? Resumes are optional. There is a section on the Common App that you can um, add all your extracurricular activities. Sometimes students like to submit resumes. They prefer that format. Maybe there isn't enough space on the Common App. You can submit a resume. I, tend to, I typically tell students that you don't have to list every single thing that you participate in. Um, but everything that you spend a significant amount of time doing, you want to put that on your resume because I want to see that you are a well-rounded student. So for some students, they have no choice but to go home after school and take care of younger siblings, maybe help out with uh, elderly grandparents. If that's what you spend a significant amount of time doing, you want to make sure to put that on your, on your Common App because I want to see how you're spending your time outside of being in the classroom. Um, so if you're at working at a, an ice cream shop, pizzeria, um, you're caddying, anything you do outside of the classroom, any clubs or organizations, definitely make sure to put that down um, on that section of the common application. So again, I mentioned that test scores are optional. You will never ever be required to submit test scores. However, middle of 50% of our students that do submit test scores tend to score between the 1230 to a 1360 on the SAT and a 28 to 31 on the ACT. That's just average. If you have a little below those uh, scores, that doesn't mean you don't have a chance of getting in. However, please know that if you submit your test scores, um, they will be considered in the decision making process. So you kind of want to be very careful. If you're not sure about test scores, just don't submit them. Again, you won't be penalized. Um, there are some schools that will say that they're test optional, but in order to be considered for a scholarship or to get into a specific program, it's at that time you'd have to submit test scores. Um, at Fairfield, we are test optional in every sense of the word. You can still be accepted and still be considered for merit scholarships. Typically, our students have a B plus A minus GPA, and every year the class gets more and more competitive. Um, so that's just kind of something to think about, that every year, this is what you see right now, and then after the next class graduates, it's going to be even more competitive. The test scores typically always seem to increase every year. But as you can see, only 26% of admitted students, um, actually, they did not submit test scores, and they were admitted and still received scholarships. Okay, so we do have some deadlines. Okay, so we are not a rolling admission school. A lot of schools are rolling admission basis where you can submit your application whenever. We are not one of those schools. We do have some deadlines. Early action is due by November 1st. That is typically for the student that is pretty confident in their first three years of high school because by the time you apply, we won't have your senior year grades. Um, 
So if you're pretty confident within the first three years of your high school, apply early action, it's non-binding, and you find out your decision typically a week or so before Christmas. Once you find out your decision, you can put Fairfield to rest and start focusing on the other schools that you might be interested in. So with early action, you can either be accepted, denied, or deferred. If you are denied, you cannot apply at any other time. If you are accepted, congratulations. If you are deferred, that doesn't mean that you're denied. It just means that we need to see maybe more recent grades um, or anything else that you think will help your application. Um, and then your application gets rolled into our regular decision pool. And then you'll find out your final decision with our regular decision applicants no later than April 1st. Most of the times it's mid-March, but April 1st is kind of like the buffer. So we, we typically say no later than April 1st. You'll see that we have two early decision deadlines, November 15th and January 15th. Um, essentially, for someone that may have missed the early decision one deadline, um, but realizes that they still wanna apply early decision, they do have a second opportunity to do so. Um, if you apply early decision, it does not guarantee admission. However, we do take into strong consideration your very strong interest. And so early decision is binding. So that means that if you apply early decision and you get admitted, you have to then withdraw your application from any other school that you have applied to. So early decision is typically for the student that maybe their whole family went to Fairfield, from the day they were born, they knew that they were coming to Fairfield and they're like, no matter what, I'm going to, to Fairfield. Um, early decision isn't for everyone. So that's something that I would recommend you speak to your counselor about, your family about before you apply early decision. Um, there is a, a form, an, an agreement that you have to fill out uh, so that you're aware as to what you're getting into when you apply early decision. Um, again, it's not for everyone, but we do take into very strong consideration um, that you are choosing to apply early decision. And then last but not least, regular decision is for students that not really in a rush um, or they feel that their senior year grades are very important for us to take a look at. So they'll wait until regular decision and then they find out their decision um, uh, no later than April 1st. With early decision one, you'll find out your decision, I wanna say around Christmas as well. And then early decision two, you typically find out your decision sometime in February. So like I said, once you are accepted, you are automatically considered for a merit scholarship. Um, and that's even if you don't submit test scores. So merit scholarships range from $10,000 to $25,000. Um, there's no separate application. So what happens is you apply, I look at your application. Once you're admitted, the next thing I do is look to see what scholarship you're eligible to receive. So we don't have a grid that says, if you have X GPA and Y test scores, then you automatically get $10,000 in scholarship. These scholarships are solely based on what is submitted with your application. So it's based on the curriculum that you've taken at your high school, uh, what your grades are like, what your counselor is saying about you, what your teachers are saying about you, your extracurricular activities, everything that you submit, your interview, if, you, if you've taken an interview, everything that you submit with your application determines whether or not you get a scholarship and the amount. Okay, so there's no grid, again, that, that tells us what scholarship you, you're going to get. And as you can see, Fairfield is not cheap. Um, we're about $65,000 with tuition and room and board included. So we encourage all of our students to fill out the FAFSA and the CSS profile. And those are some dates, December 1st for early action and early decision one and January 15th um, for regular decision and early decision two as to when the FAFSA and the CSS profile should be submitted. Not every school that you're applying to is going to require the CSS profile, so you wanna keep a lookout uh, for those for that when you're applying for financial aid. So, but we do require the FAFSA and the CSS profile. And these are just um, some of our outcomes. 
that have been pretty consistent from year to year. We do have a great alumni network. Um, so aside from our students graduating with the skills, the necessary skills to get the job on their own, um, we do have a great alumni network that are always looking out for our Fairfield students. Um, and our students never have an issue getting a job after, after graduation. And this is just a picture of Bellarmine Hall. Um, so this is where students begin freshman year, freshman convocation. And this is where they graduate um, as well, Bellarmine Hall. So if you ever get a chance to visit campus, um, we do encourage students to, to visit Bellarmine Hall, which, which used to be a castle, if I'm not mistaken. And this is where students graduate. So, and that's uh, our president, Dr. Nimick. I'll stop here and see if we have any questions. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so somebody asked if you check the box that you don't need for need-based aid, do you fill out the FAFSA? So the FAFSA is absolutely free. Um, it's up to students. You don't have to fill it out, but if you want any type of um, institutional aid or then we do at least encourage you, I think you still have to fill out the CSS profile. The FAFSA though, um, it's up to you, but it's free. So we do encourage students to, to fill it out anyway. Great. Uh, does Fairfield have Greek life? So it's not like what you see on TV with the big Greek and fraternity houses. Um, there are some honors programs um, or depending on, or, or associations, um, but we don't have like fraternities and sororities and, and big uh, frat houses that, that you would see in the movies. Um, how diverse is the campus? Percentage of white versus black, versus et cetera. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I don't have the exact numbers. Um, in terms of diversity, that is definitely something that um, is on the forefront of Fairfield, something that we strive to increase every year. I would say uh, in regards to um, Ahana, if you will, African American, Hispanic, Native American, Pacific Islander, I would say it's approximately 18%, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I also am in charge of our MVP program, which is the program that um, we invite students to come to campus, students of color, especially to come to campus and to kind of learn about the different organizations, um, affinity organizations that we have on campus um, and to kind of see for themselves what our diverse community looks like. But again, that is something that we um, strive to increase every year. Great. Um, are there any special considerations for legacies, like if a parent or relative went there? Right, so I mean, it's noted on the campus, on the common application, we do take note of that, but that doesn't guarantee admission, it doesn't guarantee special um, scholarship or anything like that, but it is noted. What percentage of international students? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Don't have that off the top of my head. Um, I would encourage you to reach out to our international counselor um, and I can give you his, his name is Tim O'Connor, and his email is going to be T-O-C-O-N-N-O-R at fairfield.edu. And he can share those numbers with you. I don't, I don't have them off the top of my head. Great. Do you track demonstrated interest? We do. We definitely do. So, if things were back to normal, showing up at um, high school visit, this demonstrated interest, coming in for a visit, um, letting us know that you did a self-guided tour, um, doing an interview, any type of interaction, maybe sitting in on a virtual session that, that we had, um, anything that you have done where you can show that you've interacted with someone from the school or participated in some type of event, we do, we do um, take that into consideration. Uh, are you still doing interviews? Well, that's, I guess, my question. 
Um, so this week is actually the last week of virtual interviews. Um, we do plan to pick them back up in September. I'm not 100% sure if they're all going to be virtual. Um, we're hoping to still be on campus and still have visitors on campus. So we're hoping to have some in-person interviews as well. I would just encourage you to go to our website and to look for those updates. Okay. Do you offer intramural or club sports? We do. So, you know, D1 athletics is very rigorous. Not everyone wants to play at that level, but they, you know, they still want to remain a part of some type of athletic program. So we do have club and intramural sports that are also competitive. Great. How hard is it to get into the business and engineering as an internal transfer? As an intern, oh, so meaning I'm assuming that question is if someone was in the College of Arts and Sciences and then wanted to switch over to yeah. business or engineering. It's a seamless process. Um, and a lot of that has to do with our core curriculum where a lot of the courses that you take can also um, count towards requirements that may be for a, a, another program in a different school. Um, it's really just a matter of having a conversation with the advisor, making sure you're on the right track, taking the appropriate courses to then switch over. But if that's something that you want to do, I would encourage you to, to kind of know that earlier on as opposed to later on so that you can still graduate within a decent time. Can you talk more about the campus internship and job fairs? Right. How so that recruit and where the largest number of kids go. Hmm. So where the largest number of kids go, that really all depends on what the student wants to major in. I know that our career center is awesome. Um, they put on two huge career fairs, one in the fall, one in the spring. They're so big that we, all, we get emails, the, the staff and faculty get emails to park somewhere else because when the career fair is, is coming to campus, all the parking is, is taken. Um, but we, we get companies from all over General Electric, um, I'm, any type of Fortune 500 company you can think of, they're at the um, career fair. Um, they, students, you know, go there to uh, ask questions. A lot of times they're being interviewed. We have people that come to campus to interview students so that those students don't even have to go leave campus to, to get interviewed. Um, and again, so these companies are very familiar with Fairfield. Any company that you can think of, um, and for some reason they're all slipping my head right now, but it's a huge career fair where we have over, we have hundreds of companies on campus twice a year. Um, so it's very easy for students to to get connected with someone um, for future jobs. And again, internship opportunities, it's just a matter of having a conversation with, with your professor because they're great um, resources. Uh, or if you know some, if you know of an internship that you might be interested in, you can participate in that as well, something that you found out on your own. Um, but speaking to your professors, we do have um, internship coordinators. They'll help point you in the right direction, but you have to do everything yourself, set up the interview and all of that stuff yourself. But um, students typically participate in interview, I mean, uh, internships, I would say junior year, maybe second semester, sophomore year, typically junior year. Um, and it's, it's, not, it's not hard getting an internship at all. Um, can you talk about what is requ required with the core curriculum? What is required with the core curriculum? Mm -hmm. So you're going to take um, your typical um, English math courses. Um, you're required to do a year of religion and I think philosophy. So a year is two semesters. Um, you're going to take courses within the arts. Um, you're going to take courses that you probably would have never imagined taking. Say you're interested in engineering and you're wind it, you're, you wind up taking a film course um, because it satisfies one of the core requirements. And then you realize that it's interesting and then that, that might be something that you want to minor in. But our belief is that if you are going to be an engineer or a nurse, you're not just going to take engineering courses. You're not just going to take nursing courses. We want to make sure that you are a well-rounded person and that you have accumulated all the skills that you would need um, after graduation to secure a job. So it's courses throughout theater, 
art, religions, uh, philosophy that you, you're going to wind up taking, regardless of what you're majoring in. Can you talk more about study abroad? Sorry, yes, I, I was supposed to mention that. Um, we study abroad is very popular at Fairfield. I would say about 60% of our students study abroad. It doesn't matter what you're majoring in, you do have the opportunity to study abroad. Um, we have a couple of Fairfield specific study abroad programs. Um, those places include Italy, Ireland, Australia, Spain. Um, Nicaragua was one, but I'm hearing that might be changed to Puerto Rico. Um, so those are just some of the Fairfield specific programs. So when I say Fairfield specific, that means that um, you'll be taught by Fairfield professors in one of those places. Doesn't matter what you're majoring in, we do have uh, programs that are year long, a semester long, maybe you can go over the summer. It really depends on the courses you need to take, where you're going, what's offered, things of that nature. But we are, we do have over 60 study abroad programs. So. If you're not interested in any of those that I mentioned, um, there you can study almost almost anywhere um, in the world. It's just a matter of speaking with the study abroad advisor and making sure that things are set up over there for you. What percentage of students graduate in four years? Yes, um, our, I would say about 95%, high 90s. Um, very rarely do you have someone graduate in five years unless they're doing that fifth year, that four plus one program. So majority of our students graduate within four years. Great, always good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Are there research opportunities? Yes, yeah, so um, again, because our school is the size of our school um, and that one-on-one -on -one attention that students get with professors, it's very easy for students to connect with professors and um, participate in research opportunities. So especially for maybe like a major like biology, there's tons of research opportunities um, and you'll hear about those opportunities when uh, in class talking to your professor. Um, and it's just a matter of you having a conversation with your professor um, and just finding out what those research opportunities are and letting them know that you are interested in, in doing that. So it's not something where you'd have to wait until maybe the end of your junior year or senior year. Um, it is highly encouraged that students get involved in research opportunities. Um, and the size of our school um, and that one-on-one -on -one attention lends, lends to that. Where do students hang out when they are not in class? Are there other things to do in Fairfield and how close is that to campus other than going to New York City? So we do have, Fairfield is a cute town um, where there's, so the shuttle will take you into town. Um, there's 300, if there might be over 365 eating establishments, um, but we typically say there's 365 eating establishments, which includes places like Dunkin' Donuts. Um, but there's quite a few restaurants that um, our students rave about in the Fairfield area. It's a nice little shopping area over there as well. Um, you know, they have like Victoria's Secret, The Gap. Um, there's the beach there. We have a bookstore in town. Um, the local uh, supermarket is, is Stop and Shop. So there's always something to do in town. Um, and on campus, we have over 100 clubs and organizations. So there's always something happening um, on campus. and. Once a club or organization has an event that has free food, there's tons of, of students um, on campus and involved in, in that event. Um, so if they're not in New York City, they're probably in town um, at a restaurant <laughs> having, just, just hanging out. There's, <laughs> there's always something, no worries. There's always something to do. Um, we're not a ghost town on the weekends. Again, like I said, there's always something happening on campus. Um, and if people aren't on campus, they're, a downtown Fairfield, which is the town I was referring to, or Stanford, Connecticut, which isn't too far away. You're not allowed to have a car on campus until you are a junior or you are a sophomore student in the nursing program because that's when students start clinicals. But it's still very easy to get around. Like I mentioned earlier, we do have shuttles that take students around and they do come frequently. How far is the main area of Fairfield? Can you walk to those shops? You can walk, 
um, on a beautiful day, you can walk. I would say, I'm a fast walker. So I would say you can probably get into town walking within 10 to 15 minutes. Um, on a nice day, that's, that's nothing. Um, but again, we do have shuttles that take you there, but it's not, it's not far at all. Cool. Uh, and then I think last question, are you doing any in-person tours at the moment? So we were, this is the last week um, that that's happening. And that's because we're getting prepared to welcome our students back to campus. Um, and again, we're hoping to, to start those things up again in September. I know that in September and throughout the fall semester, we have um, some weekend visit options, in-person options, um, and some weekday in-person options. There might be more weekend days as opposed to week days, um, but there will be in-person visits starting up in September. So just continue to look, look at our website for any updates regarding that, those visits. Great. Thank you. Um, and then someone asked about the beach housing options. Um, yes, so beach, beach housing is very, 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 very competitive. <laughs> um, but again, it's a lottery system. So once you are going to become a senior, I believe you have to like put your name in a lottery. And if you get chosen to move off campus, it is at that time that you can then start looking at uh, beach housing. Um, but it's not something that all seniors do. Um, so you don't feel that that's something that you have to do as a senior. Like I said, there's different types of residence halls um, that you can experience while on campus. But if you are one of the lucky ones that get the opportunity to move off campus, uh, you should have the opportunity to, to live on the beach as it is very popular to do so. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I did not get to live on a beach in my college, so. Right, yeah, me neither. <laughs> awesome, any final remarks? Um, no, not really. If anyone is interested in seeing how we have changed things um, because of COVID, there is something on our website um, that you can click on to kind of see the changes that we've made um, due to COVID. Um, but in regards to reviewing your application, as of now, nothing has really changed. We've always been test optional. So I would just encourage you to apply the same way you would normally apply. If you wanna submit test scores, feel free to do so. If you don't wanna submit test scores, you will not be penalized in any way for not submitting your test scores. Um, so as of now, the application process remains the same until we hear otherwise. Great, thank you. Thanks for joining us. And I hope oh, no worries. Thanks for having me. Yep. Have a great rest of your evening and good luck with your son. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Got to figure out what to do with him for the rest of the summer. But <laughs> um, so that's a challenge in itself. But um, no, thanks for having me. And I want to wish everyone that joined us um, a great rest of the summer. Good luck in school this year. And um, hopefully we have you on campus in the fall. Yes. Thank you. All righty.